السلام عليكم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما الا وان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار my dear brothers and sisters tonight is the 28th of rabi'a al-thani 1443 years of the hijra of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam which coincides with december 3 2021 And today we are going to uh, share with you one of the very beautiful incidents in the Masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which was an incident of raising funds for the needy people. And this hadith is very special because this hadith is reported by one of the sahabi whose name is Jarir ibn Abdullah al-Bajali radhiyallahu anhu and he was known to be a companion with a very handsome face. Very handsome face. Uh, there is lot of information about him uh, but let me read to you one hadith uh, this hadith is uh, reported by imam uh, al bukhari in, uh, in kitab adab al mufrad and has been authenticated by imam al albani rahmatullahi alayhi and also the story is also mentioned by imam ahmad in his musnad and been authenticated by sheikh muqbil ibn hadi al wadi rahimahumullah ta'ala Uh, Jarir ibn Abdullah he said that ma ra'ani Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam illa tabassama fi wajhihi whenever the prophet sallam saw me he used to smile this was how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam always greeting this great sahabi and this is a of course a great manaqib a great virtue for uh, this great sahabi radhiyallahu anhu qala wa qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once he said a man will enter through this door or through this fajr or through this door of the of the masjid uh, the best of the men from yemen and he said ala wajhihi mishatu malak on his face there is the wiping of the angel i e his appearance was extremely handsome like he was as if an angel so beautiful and so handsome as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes here then yusuf alayhi salam in the quran uh, upon the tongue of those women when they saw him they said wa qulna hasha lillah ma hadha bashara they said hasha lillah uh, this is not a human in hadha illa malakun karim indeed this is a noble angel cuz say then yusuf alayhi salam was extremely handsome and this is the description of This great Sahabi Jarir ibn Abdullah al-Bajali radhiyallahu anhu. He also mentioned, and the Hadith, as I mentioned, is authenticated by Sheikh Mukbil. He said that when he went to Al Madina, he said, "Anaktu rahilati, I tied my camel, wa halal tu aibati, and my, I untied my dress, thumma labis tu hullati, and then I wore my hulla, my dress. So he was wearing something very, like uh, you know, uh, tread, like uh, you know, dressy." 
because he wanted to enter the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. Thumma dakhaltu, meaning he entered the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, فَإِذَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم يَخْتُبُ And the Messenger ﷺ was giving the khutbah. فَرَمَانِ النَّاسُ بِالْحَدَقِ uh, the people started staring at me. So they kept on staring at him until he said, Fakultu, I said to a person who was sitting beside me, Did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi make any mention of me? So that Sahabi, he said to Jari, radiallahu anhu, that yes, he made a very beautiful, uh, uh, you know, uh, mention of you. And while, while he was giving khutbah, he mentioned, From this door will enter a man, the best man from Yemen, and on his face there is the wiping of the angel. So a Sahabi Jarir ibn Abdullah said, Fahamittu Hamittullah, I uh, thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ma Ubalani uh, for what he uh, basically bestowed upon me of the goodnesses. This is uh, uh, will suffice to understand uh, uh, you know the nobility of this great companion of the Allah. Anhu. Imam Muslim reported this hadith of Jarir ibn Abdullah al-Bajali in two places in Sahih Muslim, one in Kitab al-Ilm and another in Kitab uh, al-Zakat. Uh, Imam, ibn, Imam Muslim, he said, Qala, Imam Muslim, Haddathani Muhammad ibn al-Muthanna al-Anazi, Akhbarana Muhammad ibn Ja'far, Haddathana Shu'bah, an Aun ibn Abi Juhayfata, an, an al-Mundir ibn Jarir, an Abihi. This is the chain of narration of Imam Muslim for the long narration. Uh, Imam Muslim's teacher here is Muhammad ibn al-Muthanna al-Anazi, who is from Basra, whose, whose teacher is Muhammad ibn Ja'far, who is known as al-Ghundar, whose title was known as al-Ghundar, and he was the, also Basri from Basra, the student or the, I believe he was the, he was married to the daughter of his teacher Shoba, if I'm not wrong. And his teacher here is Shobat ibn Hajjaj al-Basri, one of the great ulama of hadith. And Aun ibn Abi Juhayfa, who is from Kufa, al-Kufi. And al-Mundir ibn Jarir, who is from Kufi, he is also al-Kufi from Kufa. And Abihi, Jarir ibn Abdul al-Bajali. So the Sahabi Jarir ibn Abdul al-Bajali, a significant portion of his time he stayed in Kufa. So that's why he is also known as al-Kufi. So this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu as you can see, it started from al Madina. Of course, Jarir ibn Abdul al-Bajali was Madina. Then it went to Kufa in Iraq, the town Kufa, very famous town Kufa. And from there it traveled to Basra. And the ulama of the hadith, this is why they discuss these names and the titles to make us understand how the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, you know, we can trace through the lands through which, uh, you know, this hadith reached. So Imam Muslim was from Naisapur, from Iran, the Mudun Iran now. In those time it was the Khurasan, the greater Khurasan. There was no Iran at that time. The greater Khurasan, which was Iran, Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, a much part of Russia and Afghanistan all the way to Pakistan and Iran. This was the great Ar Khurasan. So Imam Muslim was from Naisapur, Khurasani. He traveled to Basra. Now you can understand how the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu was collected. Huh? And these travels are not easy. We have to remember when we are learning this hadith or hearing this hadith, we have to appreciate the traveling of these great personalities, generation after generation, they did that so that the preservation of the Sunnah can be with precision. So this is with regards to the chain of the narration. And as we know that the ulama of the hadith, they say, Nisful ilm. Half of the knowledge is al-isnad. Half of the knowledge is the isnad. In fact, we cannot jump into the, chain, the, the text unless the chain of the narration is authentic. So it is the asal of the knowledge. If the chain is broken, even the text is very beautiful. The story is very beautiful. It has no meaning. I.e. it cannot be connected to the Prophet So it is not authentic. So it, doesn't, it cannot be part of our religion. So that's why they used to say nisful ilm, half of the knowledge is isnad. And the other half is of course the matan, the text. So they used to describe the chain as a ladder. Okay, so and each of these men in that ladder is like a step. So you climb it and when you can authentically climb it, then you get the jewel. 
which is basically the text which will tell us what happened in the time of the Prophet This narration, uh, uh, as we mentioned, that the lower part of the chain is people from Basra and the upper part closer to the Prophet is from Kufa. And uh, this is from the Hadith of Sudasiyat, meaning between Imam Muslim and the Prophet Sallallahu there are six men. Okay, and also this narration tells us a lataif, a, a you know, uh, uh, a uh, goodness of this chain is we see that the son is narrating from the father. Mundir is narrating from his father, Jarir ibn Abdullahi al Bajari, radiallahu anhu. So Jarir said, "Qala kunna in the Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi sadri nahari." He said. We were in the company of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Fi Sadr nahar Sadr nahar means in Awal nahar Meaning, this was before Az-Zawal, in the early part of the day. So they were gathering there in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said that a group of, uh, while we were there with the Messenger وسلم, a group of people came, they were barefooted, they were naked. Orat is naked, but here doesn't mean fully naked, meaning they were not dressed properly. They were very poor, shabby, very bad situation. Okay? And they were wearing, and then he says, Orat, what does it mean by Orat? That they were, they were dressed in uh, 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 nimar, nimar is, or you know uh, uh, al aba. These are basically clothes which are stitched from wool, you know, woolen, which made from from the wool of the sheep or the animal. And they were they were hanging their swords with them around their neck, of course. And majority of them from Mudar, the tribe of Mudar, balkulhum min Mudar. But rather, all of them were from the Mudar. And Mudar, the, the, the tribe, Mudar is a very famous tribe. It's Mudar ibn Nizar. And this is when we go to the, when we talked about the lineage of the Prophet, if you remember, this is the tribe the Prophet comes from. The Quraysh, the tribe, the Qurayshis, and all of the other tribes, many of the Arab tribes, they connect themselves to Mudar. And Mudar ibn Nizar, this tribe is for sure from the children of Sayyidina Ismail, alayhi salam, as it is reported in the book of the Ansar or the book of the lineages. In another report in Muslim, Sai Muslim also, it is authentic, of course. He said, Kuntu jalisan in the Nabi sallallahu alayhi sallam fa atahu qawmun mujtabi nimar. We were sitting with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi sallam, so they were in a gathering. Most likely the person was discussing things with them or they were talking or they were waiting for the prayer. Okay. Fa tama'ara wajhu rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi sallam lima ra'a bihim min al-faqati فَدَخَلَ ثُمَّ خَرَجَ فَأَمَرَ بِلَالًا فَأَذَّنَ وَأَقَامَ فَصَلَّ ثُمَّ خَطَبَ The color of the face of the Prophet ﷺ changed. Why it changed? Because he saw uh, them in a very bad situation. And a Muslim should learn from this, that when we see our people or any human being in a bad situation, it should not make us happy. It should make us sad, upset. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he entered the house and he came out. And the ulama they said most likely he did that because he wanted to go and see if there was something that he could bring from the house. But he came out and he didn't have anything. And many times in the, in the, in the house of the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't have things. Like for example today in the Jummah we were discussing the hadith of Abu Huraira that a man came in the masjid of the Prophet and the hadith in Sahih Muslim and Bukhari, very authentic hadith, and said I'm hungry. I am so hungry. So Prophet Sallallahu sent somebody to his wives, each of his wives. They could not find anything. So the Prophet said, I do not have anything except water. So sometimes the Prophet's house didn't have anything. This is not because the Prophet Sallallahu was poor, but this is because the Prophet Sallallahu and his wives were extremely generous. Okay, They used to share their food in a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, they would not even care what is there or what is not there. This was their nature. And this is the highest level of generosity, of course, and that is something 
was in the house of the Prophet and he commanded Bilal radiallahu anhu to pronounce the adhan and the iqama and he led the prayer of course observed the prayer and this shows that you know the people who came from the mudar those who were poor right they all joined the prayer and they prayed with the Prophet rich and poor regardless their situation was difficult or, or easy they did not let the obligation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be neglected and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed their affairs uh, in another version it clearly says فَصَلَّ الظُّهْرَ ثُمَّ سَعِدَ مِنْ بَرًا صَغِيرًا the Prophet sallam led the dhuhr prayer then he climbed a small mimbar okay فحمد الله and he praised Allah وأثنى عليه and he glorified Allah سبحانه وتعالى ثم قال then he said أما بعد فإن الله أنزل في كتابه then he recited two of the verses indeed Allah سبحانه وتعالى revealed in his book and he recited سورة النساء verse number one and also one of the verses of Surah Al Hashr the verse of Surah Al Nisa he recited يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم O mankind Revere your Lord. Taqwa is, of course, a great and a, 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 is a very comprehensive term, and there is a lot of definition from the ulama. And one of the definition, which is very beautiful, from Talq ibn Habib, one of the tabi'i, he said that taqwa is to obey Allah with the nur of Allah, seeking the reward from Allah, and taqwa is to stay away from the things that Allah has prohibited with the nur of Allah, with the guidance and the light of Allah huh, to seek the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is taqwa. One of the very comprehensive definition. Ittaqu rabbakum, fear your Lord, alladhi khalaqakum min nafsi wahida, the one who created you from one soul, and this is Adam alayhi salam, wa khalaqa minha zawjaha, and he created from that one soul his zawj, his wife, his spouse, Hawa alayhi salam. So Adam and Hawa, both of them were created without a father and a mother. No father, no mother. Adam alayhi salam, we know his creation directly from the mud. As for Hawa alayhi salam, alayhi salam, how she was created from Adam, there is nothing authentic to prove that she was created from the left rib of Adam alayhi salam. As the famous story goes, this is from the weak narrations uh, that comes from there is nothing authentic to prove that she was created from the bent rib from the left side of Adam alayhi salam. The famous story that they say that he was sleeping, he woke up and he found this woman and all this. All of these narrations are very weak, cannot be used as proof or evidence. Uh, and he brought forth from both of them a lot, a multitude of men and women. والأرحام, and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through whom you demand your mutual rights. Meaning, you connect your arham, you connect with your, uh, uh, you know, the, the relationships of the womb, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all watchful over you. And this verse the Prophet recited to install in the heart of the Sahaba the fear of Allah and to make them care for the children of the Adam. Because these people who are from the tribe of Mudar, they are in this situation. They are your own people. And they are the children of Adam. And you have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you need to know that there are responsibilities that we have towards the mankind. Then he recited Surah Al-Hashr verse number 18. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, ittaqu allaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadir. Fear Allah or be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep your duty to him and let every person look to what he has sent forth for tomorrow. So, when we do our action, we do the good and we stay away from the evil. And this, of course, gives a direct, you know, admonition for those who are present to give sadaqa, charity. Because tomorrow you will not be able to give once you are gone. This is the time. 
wherever there's an opportunity give وَاتَّقُوا uh, اللَّهِ uh, and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware of what you do. These are the two verses the Prophet sallallahu recited. So as we see that these verses the ulama they say they were recited to install the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hearts of the Sahaba al-Kiram so that they would uh, rush to support these poor people who were suffering. Uh, then the Prophet sallallahu said تَصَدَّقَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ دِينَارِهِ وَمِنْ uh, Sorry, تَصَدَّقَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ دِينَارِهِ A man donates from his dinar, silver coin, مِنْ دِرْهَ Sorry, dinar is golden coin, مِنْ دِرْهَمِهِ From his silver coin, مِنْ ثَوْبِهِ From his dress, مِنْ سَعِبُرِّهِ From the saw or the saw is the four mud. It was a certain container uh, that was known as the saw measure in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu which was basically equivalent to four mud and one mud is basically when when we cup both of our hands a grown-up man's hand cup together it's called a mud four mud of food is equal to one saw and they had containers like this hmm? in al Madinah. that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi famous hadith al-waznu waznu al-makkah wal mikyalu mikyal al Madinah. the weight is the weight of Makkah and the mikyal the, the volume is the volume of Madina and the Prophet made dua for to, to bless the saw and the mud of Al Madina. So this is something that we should try to uh, you know uh, implement inshallah when it comes to the zakat al fitr when it comes to wudu when it comes to ghusl the Prophet's ghusl was with one saw of water Prophet's wudu was with one mud of water this is something that we should try to attain so that we can seek the baraka the our teacher always says small is big less is more and this is something proven in the Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Min sari, min min sa iburrihi from man sa of wheat, uh, min sa in, uh, min sa it tamrihi, and from one sa of date. Hatta kala walau bi shikki tamra, even with half of a date. Shikki here means part half of a date. So when we go to the translation, unfortunately, you know they say that the people hastened to give sadaqah. Yes, they did. But this is not the meaning of this specific line. The meaning of this specific line, and the ulama have different aqwal. Some of the ulama, they say this means, the Prophet said, if a man gives charity from his dinar, their harm, clothes, wheat, and uh, days, even half of a day, he will get the reward. And some of them, they say, the Prophet is telling the example of a man who does this. So that if you do it, you are going to get the reward. And I checked uh, when I was taking the sharah of Imam uh, Muhammad ibn Adam al-Ethiopi, he said what he believes to be correct is this is a khabar. This is a, the Prophet is giving a, an example here, but he means to command the Sahaba. You should give charity from your dinar, you should give charity from your dirham, you should give charity from your dress, you should give charity from your food. This is what? Uh, these Imams they mentioned with regards to uh, this thing. Kala Faja Arojulun Minal Ansar Bisur Bisuratin Kadat Kafuhu Tajizu Anha Bal Kode Ajazat. A man from then he said Jalil Ibn Abdullah he's watching all this, right? He said a man from the Ansar he came with a surah. Surah is a basically a container that used to contain gold coins and silver coins okay and there are other narrations which shows that this surah was full of warak mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. silver coins warak is another name of dirham silver coins anyway he came and he could not hold it with his hand heavy he could not hold it it was full okay uh, وَثِيَابِ حَتَّ رَأَيْتُ وَجْهَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَتَهَلَّلُ كَأَنَّهُ مُذْهَبَةٌ He said that then the people started following him, following the example of this Ansari man, okay, until I saw, Jarir is saying, I saw Kaumain, like two heaps, two large heaps of ta'am, food, and also clothing, and of course it had, now you know that, also the fulus, the money, the gold and the silver coins in the time of the Prophet And he said, until I saw the Prophet face beaming with joy, happy, bright, glowing, glowing like, you know, gold, 
golden face was so he was so in the beginning his faith the color of the face changed because he was sad and angry upset for the sake of Allah and when he saw goodness what is the goodness he saw that the Sahaba they're donating and when somebody donates this is good for him and on top of that this donation will help these poor people so he was happy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said من سن في الإسلام سنة حسنة he who sets a good sunnah in Islam okay good example in Islam فله أجرها وأجر من عمل بها for him is that reward of that good deed and whoever does that good deed meaning he started this and people follow him or she started this and people follow he, her she is going to get that he is going to get the reward and those who follow his or her example will also get the he will get that person will get the reward for that man amila biha ba'dahu min ghayri ayyan qusa min ujurihim shay without those followers their rewards being uh, you know diminished so they will get the reward and that reward will be automatically transferred to the person who started this. Started this good sunnah. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَمَنْ سَنَّ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سُنَّةً سَيِّئَةً كَانَ عَلَيْهِ بِزْرُهَا وَبِزْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ مِنْ غَيْرِ أَنْ يَنْقُسَ مِنْ أَوْزَارِهِمْ شَيْءٍ So he said, but at the same time, if a person starts a sunnah which is sayyia, evil sunnah, huh? and anybody does it after him, this person who started it, he will get the sin of it, and those who follow this bad sunnah, he will get the sin of that too, without the uh, you know the 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 diminution of any of the burden upon the sinners who are following him in this sin. Now here the, the you know the wordings are very important for us to see. The Prophet said, said what? Man sanna fil islami sunnatan hasana. And he said, Wa man sanna fil islami sunnatan sayya. Here the word sunnah is used linguistically. Because there is the word sunnah has different meaning. But two of the major meaning is one of the major meaning of the sunnah is called shara'i meaning. The shara'i or the legislative meaning is Sunnah of the Prophet and the linguistic meaning of Sunnah means way a way okay so when the Prophet says Sunnah fil Islam Sunnatan Sayyia can there be any Sunnah of the Prophet which is evil never all the Sunnah of the Prophet is good so when we look at the example here of the Prophet's wording what do we understand that he using the he is using the word Sunnah linguistically he is not using it shari. This is Muhammad Rasulullah who knows the meaning of sunnah better than anybody else. Why we are saying this? Because there are people who come and say bid'ah is of two types. Bid'ah hasana, bid'ah sayya. Good bid'ah, bad bid'ah. We say no, this is not, our ulama said this is not correct. And these people who say bid'ah, good bid'ah, bad, okay, they use the statement of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. The famous statement of Abu Khattab when he reintroduced the the Jama prayer of Taraweeh in the Masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu he when he saw them praying he said Ni'ma hadhihi bid'a how beautiful is this bid'a so the people of the bid'a they use this statement of Umar Ibn, Umar Ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu in the with the wrong twist what is the twist they say ah see Umar Ibn Khattab is saying there is good bid'a no he is not saying that he is using the word bid'a linguistically not legislatively because the legislative meaning of bid'ah is innovation in the religion and all innovation in the religion is evil how do we know because the prophet said wa kullu bid'atin dalala wa kullu dalalatin fin nar all bid'ah is misguidance and all misguidance leads to hellfire when the prophet said kullu bid'atin dalala all bid'ah leads to dalala what does he talk about the bid'ah here is he talking about linguistic or shar'i he is definitely talking shari. Any innovation in the religion 
in the matter of the religion would the prophet never believed in never did it never supported and somebody comes and introduce this in a new way then this is a bid'a in the religion and all of those is bad so when the bid'a is used linguistically whether it is used linguistically or uh, legislat legislatively we need to understand that first and this is one of the greatest example because this is from the tongue of the prophet sallallahu otherwise some people can come and say there is two type of sunnah sunnah good and sunnah bad is there any like this there is nothing like this all the sunnah is good when we talk about the word sunnah in a legislative term meaning the prophet's way all the prophet's sunnah is good but when we talk about linguistically as the prophet did over here then something there is something called sunnah and hasana sunnah and so what is sunnah and hasana when the prophet said anybody who introduces sunnah and hasana what does he mean by that sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's talking about anybody introduces something based upon the teaching of the quran and the sunnah i.e what the prophet used to do for example i give an example let's say somebody went into the town and these people don't give charity or they don't feed the poor people poor people come and work in their home but they don't feed them they don't treat them good they don't give them proper dressing proper clothing proper food so he said this is a problem let me teach them what the prophet used to do and he shows them with example that poor people should be fed and given good clothes the same food and same clothing that we give where exactly the same thing has to be given to them so the people now realize oh they, we were wrong so now they correct themselves so what this man did he introduced sunnah and hasana he didn't introduce anything new in the religion because being kind to the poor people the day laborers the people who come and work in our home whether they are our slaves or whether they are our hired people whoever they are they stay in our home or they temporarily work in our home and go back uh, you know we hire people to come and do the lawn cutting cleaning houses fixing things huh? uh, uh, those type of people they have to be treated well and good so uh, he is not introducing anything new. He is just reintroducing what the Prophet taught. So that's called Sunnat in Hassan. As for Sunnat in Sayyia, for example, one of the Sunnat in Sayyia we have in our culture is when somebody dies, they gather everybody on a certain day and they read Quran. So they one person reads half Jews, another person reads maybe one Jews, another three, and they basically uh, divide the whole Quran into different groups of people and they do a khatme quran in some culture it is known as quran khani uh, in our culture you know they do it on the fourth day they call it chehlam kul khani they do it on the 40th day they do it on the uh, uh, death anniversary uh, all of these things uh, they look good but they are innovation in the religion why they're innovation in the religion because the prophet never did this so now if somebody comes to a town and nobody is doing this and he says, hey, your beloved people died and you are not reading Quran? What is this? Gather everybody and uh, read Quran. And then one of the person raises hand, everybody, ah, oh Allah, please be made this Quran. And please, oh Allah, send these uh, uh, blessings to this dead person. All of this is, the Prophet never did this. So now he introduces this and people like it. And they keep on doing it. This is the course sunnatun sayyia. Evil sunnah. Evil way. Why it's evil? Because it is not done according to the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there could be many examples like this. It is not just related to Quran Khani. Uh, Imam Muslim also reported, as I mentioned, this hadith in Kitab al Ilm, the book of knowledge. Okay. And uh, this narration, of course, is the same Sahabi Jari Radil Al Bajali Radiallahu Anhu. Uh, this narration has some addition that the Prophet ﷺ, when he saw them in a very bad situation, su'i hal, their condition was really bad. Let me read the, that part. Uh, he said, قَالَ فَجَاءَ نَاسٌ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ A group of people from the Arabs, because mudar are the Arabs, okay? إِلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَيْهِمَ السُّوفِ They were wearing woolen dresses and the other narration talks about a certain types of woolen, woolen dress some people they say it was striped and this and that Allahu Alam for a su ahalihim and the Prophet saw their very 
you know, desperate, very bad situation. Huh? Uh, and he, when he saw their situation is so bad, he encouraged the people to give sadaqa. Nas here talking about who? The Sahaba al karam in the Masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? anhu, But they were reluctant. This nourish, this addition is not there in the other uh, report, right? anhu, Meaning like they were not very enthusiastic to give. Okay? Hatta ru'ya dhalika fi wajihihi Until we saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got angry. Why are you not giving? This is Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the masjid of Rasulullah he is the one upon whom the Quran is being revealed and he is reciting to the people and the people don't want to give so why would somebody in our time okay would think that he's a fundraiser and he stands and he recites this this and he encourages and the people don't want to give what can you do but a sahabat al are not like that thumma rajulan min al ansar jaa bi surratin min waraq then a man from the Ansari came with a surah, a container of waraq, silver coin. Thumma jaa akhar. Then another person came. Thumma tatabau hatta urifa asurur fi wajihi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the people kept on following until we saw the Prophet's face very, very happy, uh, as the other narration mentioned. So this uh, description is not there in the other narration. I wanted to bring this up. And you can understand why the Prophet Sallallahu at the end emphasized the Sunnatun Hasana, Sunnatun Sayyi'ah to talk about this first Ansari man, radiallahu anhu. The ulama of the hadith, as you we know that, you know, when they, this kind of narration, there is mention of a man, this is called Mubham. Huh? His name is not mentioned. So they go into the other books of Sunnah and they try to find out, can we figure this out, who this Ansari man was? They could not figure out. This man is Mubham, known. It could be one of the very famous ones we know, or it could be somebody other than them. But regardless who he is, he is one of those men who received this huge reward on this very blessed day. Huh? But all of these Sahaba following the example of his when he went to and gave it in the hand of the Prophet. Some of the benefits we learn from this hadith is that, and with that we will conclude, the Imam can encourage the people to donate for the goodness of the Muslims, for any good project. And people should not get angry about it actually the one who has the right to maybe be upset and sad are the people who arrange for the fundraiser as long as they get upset and sad for the sake of Allah of course Muslims getting together to share and care will bring barakah as a sahaba they did as you saw charity could be given any amount uh, some people uh, they brought big and some people they brought small but at the end of the day there was the two heap of as they said food and clothing Happiness and anger for the sake of Allah should be there in our heart. We should not get happy uh, uh, except for the sake of Allah and we should not get angry except for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes Muslims need encouragement. A sahabat al-karam, these are the best of the best, okay? But, you know, not always, uh, you know, it was that everybody was in enthusiastic in the first shot. But that doesn't mean that they didn't have goodness, okay? Uh, so then we need we need encouragement always we should try to be the first one when it comes to goodness the first one what is the benefit of being the first one that everybody who follows it you will get the reward so just raise your hand and say i'll give you the first one and be that and in this scenario uh to it is not a show off but it is to encourage the others of course this is for the sake of allah then of course this is good and we have to be always be careful not to disobey Allah and to be an example. That's another problem, right? On the other spectrum, as the Prophet mentioned, because then we will be carrying the sins of the other people. For example, sins mm -hmm. doesn't have to be just bid'a. Sins, normal sin, like stealing, lying, cheating, backbiting, this, this, this. Then the worst of the sins are bid'a. This is even worse because those sins, bid'a is a sin, but it is a very specific category of sin because when the people do bid'a, they don't realize they are sinning. They think they are gaining closeness to Allah. So it is a type of sin, but it is the worst type of sin because this person, he considers himself to be good, whereas a sinner doesn't consider himself to be good. A person who steals, he knows stealing is haram, he, he knows he's bad. But a person who is, uh, you know, doing a bid'ah, 
uh, uh, you know, for example, people sometimes write Quran and hang it around their neck, thinking that this will protect them. This is a huge bid'ah, and this bid'ah leads to shirk, associating partners with Allah. But he thinks it's good. Some people they go to the grave of the mazar, the grave of the righteous people, quote unquote. And some of, in some cases, we do not even know would this grave even belongs to any person or not. Okay, Allah knows what it is. But even if it belongs to a righteous person, it is not allowed for us to travel to these gatherings and they go around the mazar and they are so devoted to these mazars to give their you know blessings there or to gain blessings from there. So they don't realize that this is wrong. So that's why bidah is a very dangerous thing. Uh, the Prophet enthusiasm, we learn from the Prophet enthusiasm, enthusiasm to support the needy Muslims. Also, it shows us, the hadith shows us that the Imam can climb the mimbar other than the Jumu'ah, other than the Juma, and give khutbah uh, when there is a need. Like for the, here, the Prophet he prayed the Dhuhr, after the Dhuhr, he stood up on the mimbar, he climbed the mimbar, the narration clearly says, and he gave a khutbah, encouraged the people to give the charity. It is a sunnah to have member in the masjid and the member of the Prophet was three step. It is not those 20, 30 steps of these big, you know, things that people built just to show off the architecture and this and that. This is, the masjid is not a place to show art. The masjid is the place to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, gathering of knowledge can be done at any time of the day according to the convenience of the people so the sahaba at this hadith we know that they were sitting sadr in nahar in the early part of the day before the dhuhr early part of the day they were sitting with the prophet ﷺ. of course they were discussing the matters of the religion and the final one is this hadith teaches us that the father should teach the children the good things as jari ibn abdullah al-bajali taught his children and from them is mundir the one who reported this hadith in Sahih Muslim. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a benefit from these narrations, the chain of the narrations, the people, how they traveled, and of course from the text, uh, and to implement that in our life so that we can see the goodness and the light and the benefit of following the sunnah and the way of the Sahaba al kiram. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.